By the way, Kolya, I remember our yesterday's talk, and of course... I already I... started recording. Sorry? I started the recording. You started, yes? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I, I remember our yesterday talk, and <clears throat> in my today's talk, I will come to interfaces and the facts, okay? So here it will be the title would be to tropical strings, tropical strings easily. And the facts. Okay. It's a bad pen. <clears throat> Domain walls and even more. So I'll start with a very brief, brief introduction. So you know how old people are uh, talking. They remember their youth, okay? And basically they remember how it was great while they were young and how it's ugly right now. So I'm a bit different. I'll remember my, I'll recall my youth and I'll explain how ugly it was there and how how nice it's to be right now in 2020 you see the best time to be alive to do string theory as david gross says sorry i say as as gross says the best time to be alive to do string theory yes yes you see because it turns out that the more uh, i'm studying it so it turns out that it's a dead end. There are, there are always possibilities to develop, if you just think a bit. So every time you have problems, in some time you know how to solve it. It's interesting. So my memory goes to 1984, okay? When there was a fast string revolution. Yes, November. I remember a Scott uh, Perilovov coming to ITEP telling us, look guys, revolution happened. So what you need to know? You need to know that string theory is not killed, but is the main thing in the world. And the first thing that you should know is Calabi Yao Manifold. And that's what he told us. Calabi Yao manifold is such six dimensional, three complex dimensional manifold that has the first chain class of the canonical bundle equal to zero. So Calabi, Calabi conjectured and Yao proved that there is a rich flat metric. Moreover, you can write down Calabi Yao manifold, and he write down the quintic. Could you imagine this three dimensional uh, projective space? Uh, this three dimensional uh, complex manifold in CP4. So I was young. I saw here and I could not imagine this because it's a first, first order equation. And the only thing that I knew from my uh, uh, years in mathematical school is that it's impossible to solve it in any reasonable way. It's a uh, Goulois theory. So he said, just imagine this. 
And then he said, how do I know that it has first chain class of canonical bundle, e bundle equal to zero? And he wrote mysterious formula, mysterious for me. You contract it with x d over dx, you get a four form, you put down equation f of a of x, you integrate and uh, you will get exactly the holomorphic three form here because it goes down because here we have degree five, here we have degree five, so you have the only holomorphic top form. Wow, said I, how, how interesting. However, absolutely untractable. He said, look, there are two things. This has moduli A parameter. So this is the, the space of deformation of complex structure. And this space corresponds to one type of cohomology. Great, I said when I was young. However, I have no idea how to take down this integral. Then he said, no, but it's not the only thing. This surface has a, also one one cohomology. And since it has one one cohomology, there is another space of deformation called the space of Keller deformation. It's related to topology. I was looking at this formula. I had no idea neither how to see, how to take this integral, how to see topology. It was very exciting, but it was completely unclear what to do. Then other peoples are coming from, the, from America. So immediately, so at that time, Soviet Union was powerful and it was possible to invite people from United States. And people coming and telling us about that this is a theory of everything, okay? And uh, we were reading books and there was, there was a man called Mishu Okaku, okay? Now people don't remember him, but Mishu Okaku at that time was very active. And he wrote us that there are strings that are circles, uh, they join and go this way. And he said, there are also open strings this way. And this replaces Feynman diagrams and we should be able to do string field theory. So great, we said. However, we don't have no idea how these nice pictures is related to any kind of the field theory, because these things uh, dependent on moduli of complex structure that we started to study in a hurry, and these things, and it, that didn't look like uh, any kind of field theory. Then Edward Witten said, he made the talk in 1985. He was very clear. He told, give us 50 years and we will build string field theory that would unify physics, mathematics and will solve all problems. Everybody shouted, wow. So it was very excited. Everybody were excited, okay? But it was absolutely not clear how to move forward. What is uh, string field theory? How to deal with Calabi-Yau? Okay. And uh, how can we write down, after all, a string field theory on Calabi-Yau where we have no idea what are the points on the Calabi-Yau, what is the metric? There was only existence theory. So it was absolutely untractable. So this was the use, okay? 
where we had all these exciting things. Then 35 years passed by. And 35 years, you see, quite a while. And it turns out that these ideas could be made uh, into something computable. Okay? And there is a key to this computability, and this key is surprisingly tropical. Geometry. So tropical geometry appeared in a way that was absolutely related to string theory. I described tropical geometry on Wednesday. But I'll make a, a brief report on what does it mean. So tropical geometry could, could be explained in two ways. First way, you write down the same algebraic equations. That we were surprised with in 84, that we were unable to solve. But then we make a, ch a change of coordinates. The i went like as e to the z tropical over h plus i phi z. Very crazy thing where Z tropical belong to R. So you see, it's, it's, it's very crazy change of variety. Moreover, to get sensible things, we also had to rewrite parameters. Remember this quintic. Z1 to the 5 plus, plus A, Z1, Z2, etc. This A should also be written in this way. A tropical over H plus I phi A. Who could guess this? Nobody could guess this. Without, so for real numbers, this was discovered in 70s, 80s to start the asymptotics of something. The great idea was to put here phase and not to rescale the phase, to rescale only the real part. So inventor of this transformation should get some prize. And by the way, I don't know who invented it. So, so the person is Michalkin. And his school. He is a student of Yero, who invented the real thing. However, I remember Kansevich at IHES telling that it was also his idea. But by the way, if you talk to Kansevich, you will see that uh, almost all ideas were also his idea. And it's very probably because he is very smart. Uh, however, he is not publishing things. Like Anton Gerasimov, okay, Anton Gerasimov, like uh, Kansevich. So it's hard to see whose idea it is. Nevertheless, there is this idea. And I'll tell you, this idea is absolutely great because you are not only writing it this way. 
you are ten taking h to zero. You see, h is sitting here. We we'll, so that's why it's called h bar. You see, because it sits here exactly like it sits as a functional integral. <clears throat> you see, I am small. So what I propose is not only to take h to zero, but I also consider formal power series in h. Maybe this would also help. So quantum correction to tropical geometry. I thought it was Maslow who put it this way. Or maybe somebody else before we wrote. Okay, I will not talk about this, this history, you see. For me, history starts at 84, okay? When string uh, revolution came and uh, when I be be become a uh, master, okay? <laughs> when I was equivalent to master before, it is something ancient. So I remember this thing coming in. <clears throat> so it turns out that immediately you could understand what, uh, what is algebraic geometry. Not only you can understand it, you can also even write pictures, okay? You can immediately write pictures of everything and even understand what is the quantum field theory on these pictures. So absolutely untractable things of 84 become absolutely tractable here. So let me give you some explanation how it happened. So the best picture that I know is the quadratic equation. Y equals to Z1 square plus A Z plus A Z plus B, okay? How to tropicalize this? First of all, I would like to consider Y belonging to CP1 and Z also belonging to CP1. So it is the disarg idea of one six fifty approximately. You see, very old idea that you need to take projective completion of everything. Okay. So you have z here, and you have y here. Then you write down the plot written down in tropical coordinates. So here I'll draw, draw z tropical, here y tropical. In order to do this, let me modify this thing a little bit. According to this arg, I will write it in the following way. So this is due to V yet, you see, very old decomposition. I also add these things downstairs because in the, you will see, because in the projective world, everything has to be projected. And uh, you will see that this thing is a limit when C1 and C2 go to infinity and the lambda goes like c1 times c2 so the most general thing of this quadratic thing is this and then you may write down the plot how it goes and it goes in a very interesting way
So I call this thing an animal graph, okay? So what Vero would say, Vero would not see this vertical line. He said that this is an asymptotics of this function, of this function. If you take logarithmic coordinates here and here, If you would do like we all propose without vertical lines, you would typically have a bad intersectional theory. Because if you put a line here, it, it, it does intersect. If you put a line here, so here it does intersect. If you put a line here, it doesn't intersect. So as you know, when you do projectivization, you have good intersection theory. You have the notion of degree. Uh, sorry, this is one of the reason why we have to put these legs. There's I, another. Uh, sorry, I, I I got distracted. What 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 is on the um, plot? Z tropical horizontal line. Y tropical vertical line. And plot is like this. And, and there are important ingredients. First of all, it is based out of uh, straight lines, okay? So here, the angle is 45 degrees. And here the angle is such that the tangent of this uh, is this two. Here it's again 45 degrees. So here slope is one, here slope is two, here slope is one, here slope is zero. <clears throat> so how to see this? And what are the positions of uh, vertical lines? Ah, good question. A1 tropical, A2 tropical, everything is tropical. C1 tropical, C2 tropical. So uh, let me briefly recall how to get this animal graph, okay? Because if you understand this animal graph, you will understand everything about tropical uh, world. It's a good toy model example. Just study quadratic equation properly. So what, what do you see here? First. When Z tropical is smaller than A, you can neglect it. So you have a constant. When Z is greater than A1, you can neglect A1. So here we start to have linear dependence. So it goes like this. Then what happens when we pass through A2? We have quadratic. And since we are, go since we are doing with logs, once again, Z equals e to the a to z tropical over h plus i phi z. And this is a key formula in the business. So y equal to z square. When we take log, we have a slope two. 
Okay? It's written down here. Then when you pass through C1, you still have slope one because of Z here. And when you go beyond C2, it goes to a constant. So this is the body line. So this is something that we wrote already already knew. Okay. And he wrote it uh, in a paper for uh, high school children or even middle school children somewhere in quant. Because it's very simple. And if you have higher polynomial, you still have this, this line. Now the question is, what about legs and uh, I don't know, ears and horn? So where is the horn? Beyond, behind the ears or in front of it? Ah, this is the horn, these are ears, okay? Okay, so it's a irrelevant question. So how do, how do these vertical things go? So I asked it in my previous talk and professor who immediately told how, how it happened. So let us see what's going on here. Here there is the following thing. Mostly you can neglect either this or this. So only one dominate. However, if they are equal, you have the difference. And here you need to remember that there is the phase. If Z tropical equals to A1 tropical, this term goes as A1 tropical e to the I phi Z minus e to the I phi A. Can you see this? And now it is phi. So it, it will be like this. And now it's phi that is important. So when moduli are different, you can ignore phi because this thing is big and real. And this has moduli like one. However, when moduli coincide, you start to remembering phi, okay? And this thing goes from what? It goes between two and zero. And if you take a log, okay, it goes from here to minus infinity. So this is the reason of this vertical line. You see, it's, it's very hard to imagine, but once you imagine this, things would become easier. This vertical line comes from phi. So phi plays, phi starts to play the game when uh, these tropical coordinates coincide. That's why you have this line. Similar things happen here. And vertical things here come from the pole. You can actually have poles at C1 and C2 by the same mechanism. And that's why you have a complete animal. So without legs, heads and horn and ears, it's not an animal, it's a snake, okay? Snakes are not very interesting. It's an animal, mammal, you see, like we. That is interesting. And this, is, and this thing is called tropical curve.
So honestly, honestly, I need to imagine these lines starting not from zero to infinity, but from minus infinity to plus infinity. However, I I cannot picture write a picture. So you should imagine this these lines at infinity. Okay. So these are infinite lines. So thing is made out of infinite lines. So Michalkin also has problem to draw it. So I will use color to draw. Okay, I know that blue is not very visible. However, since these blue things is at infinity, yes, it should not be very visible. It's like a sky at infinity, okay? So can you see just a little bit of blue? Kolya, can you see a little bit of blue? Mm, kind of, yeah. Yes, I but it's how it. infinity should look like. Look like. Because the actual tropical curve is something that is written in black, so you can see black. Okay, so what else could we say about the tropical curve? We can say that it consists of several pieces, semi infinite pieces that are touching blue. They have infinite length. And also pieces with finite length, like this. And this is a tropical curve. Ah. There are other things that you that you should uh, play with here. You can associate directions to these vectors, to these lines. So first coordinate is horizontal, second is vertical. So here we associate vector that is zero one, zero one. Here we have a vector that is one zero, yes, horizontal vector. Here we also have one zero. Here we have a vector one one. Here we have a vector two one. Here we have a vector, of course, vertical. Sorry. One, two, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero. You can immediately observe from this writing that if you consider these vectors as momenta, this momenta is conserved as these vertices. So, since I was graduated as a physicist, I understand conservation of momentum. Okay. Now, you could study some degeneracy. What happens if I'll shrink this? Like I'll consider animal with uh, ears and horn at the same place. So two lines would come to one line. That is thick. And since the even since direction is vertical, 
I should be wise enough to understand the momentum here zero two. Okay? Because it comes from this place. And uh, later on, we will see the origin of this degeneracy. So it is when C's are together. Oh. Now, how can I work for curves not only in uh, CP1 times CP1? Remember, in the year 84, In the year 84, one second. my voice or oh, somebody switched off their voice. Okay, thank you. So in the year 84, the Calabiao was not in CP1 times CP1. The Calabiao was in CP5, CP4. So it's better to write similar pictures in CPMs. So I need to recall how CPM looks like. Of course, the simplest thing would be CP2 tropical. I will tell you the answer. How CP2 tropical looks like. Okay. Three infinities. Okay. Okay, maybe I'll I want to make it bigger. No, I like this. So what do, do these three infinities mean? Of course, they mean the following. They correspond to compactification of C star square by three divisors. Zero. Okay. So how to write down this uh, thing? There are three coordinates: z naught, z one, z two. Three projective coordinates. So c star square 
response to z1, z1 over z0, z2 over z0, and compactification. I should compactify with the following devices z1 equal to zero. It's one line. Z2 equal to zero. So Z1 equal to zero is actually this line because one is horizontal. So this is Z1 equal to zero. This is Z2 equal to zero. And there is a third one. Z0, Z0 equal to zero. So z0 equal to zero means infinity in both z1 and z2 simultaneously. So it is this one. Okay, so this is CP2. And now I can write down lines in CP2. So how can I draw lines? Of course, by writing down linear equations. A z0 plus B z1 plus C z2 equal to zero. This is the line. And if I make a plot, and I will not do it right now, you can do it yourself, exercise. Exercise. Draw a plot for this one. And of course, draw it in coordinates z1 over z0, z2 over z0. And you may be convinced, we will not do it right now, that uh, what you will get would look something like this. Mm. So let it be an exercise. Tropical solution to this equation. So once again, I have similar picture. However, this was a picture of a function that is also a curve. And, uh, and this is a curve, but in CP2. And once again, I have the vectors 0, 1, 1, 0, and of course, something like 1, 1. And once again, what I see, momentum conservation, and also moving along momentum. So it's very similar to what we see for massless particles in our world. So photons have momentum and they move along momentum. However, photons have not only direction, but also kind of value, okay? Analogy. I have direction. 
and absolute value. So these things have direction, but also absolute value. So the difference is that here absolute value is integer, okay? So we know what happens. It happens when everything is periodic in X. So we are not surprised to have these things. Okay. Now, let us play with this game. So here we have something simple. Here we have something simple. Actually, these curves are rational. So how to see that they are rational? Actually, they are rational because you should understand this curve as it use. And uh, at blue points, you are kind of gluing out a disk. So you may consider, okay. So it's a hint. Now the question would be, could we write something more interesting than rational curves? Okay. So in the year 84, we learned the following thing. When we studied, uh, we were trying to understand this Calavia. We learned that linear equation is a line, and it's rational. We also knew that the quadratic thing is rational. And actually, the fact that quadratic is rational is the origin that uh, some integrals that we studied in the first semester and second semester at our institute are such that you can take it. So <clears throat> actually, I don't respect my teachers in calculus who trained me to take integrals they were teaching us how to take this type of integrals they were not explaining to us that the reason why we can take this is because this quadric is rational And they never told us that such integral that you cannot take this integral because cubic is already irrational. It's elliptical. So instead of explaining this to us, they were teaching us how to take these integrals and they never explained why we shouldn't take this integrals. So this is a story of the middle of the 19th century. People knew how to take this, failed to take this, and then they discovered that there are elliptic curves. So it was something where we can take these integrals. So I was graduated in 1980. I was, so they were, teaching me in 1981 well everything was absolutely clear and they failed to teach me why you can take this and cannot take this so there were they were like more than 100 years behind the proper mathematical knowledge so it's it's a shame okay but now we know it So now let us try to write down quadratic something, and we know that it should be rational. 
So how do we do it? So if I'll write you a general quad, uh, general quadric, it will be hard to study how to solve it. You can do it step by step, but I will use a trick. Let me consider the simpler, simplest quadrics that are degenerate. Sorry. A zero x zero plus a one x one plus a two x two and the same b zero x zero plus b one x one plus b two x two equal to zero. Mm -hmm. How to plot this? It's easy. It's a product. So I have to plot this and plot this simultaneously, okay? Mm, no, I don't know where to plot it properly. I'll plot it here. Horizontal line. And this one. I'll try to clear the board, and I hope you can still see what is going on. So, what I know is that this thing is a singular because it's a square. I can see singularity here by this four vertex. Here I have three vertex, here I have three vertex. I think that three vertex is regular and four vertex is singular. So what do I know from algebraic geometry? That you need to resolve the singularity. So how can one resolve the singularity? So how does it work like? I should add the total momenta like this. Mm. Okay, well, let me see how to do it. Like this, like this. So momenta should be the same. And like this. Okay, now let me try to do it again. I need to move it this way. It's better to move it downstairs. Downstairs. Something like this. So it's not very ni nicely drawn, but it's clear what I did. I take this and I resolve it like this. Of course, conservation of momentum is implied. So I have this, this segment here. But still, you see, I have a tree. It is still a tree. Now, what about the elliptical. 
I put here C zero X zero plus C one X one plus C two X two. I take a product. I draw another line and I resolve here and here. Oh, so this, that's why nobody asked us to make this integral. The result is what? The result is, the result already has one loop. You see, there is a loop. And you see, That is how algebraic geometry could be drawn on a sheet of paper. Okay, my drawing is not nice, but uh, you can draw it. You could uh, see the genus of what is going on. You can see topology. You can see geometry. Moreover, when people started getting elliptic integrals, they discovered the thing that was called period. And uh, do you know why it, why it was called period? Kolya, do you know why it, why it was called period? Well, hmm? Maybe because you integrate over periods of elliptic curve. Yes, but, but why periods of elliptic curve were called periods? Well, you can imagine periodic motion. Uh, yes. So actually, it, the, the origin was very simple. There was a dynamical system called pendulum. Okay. So it was 19th century. No electricity. Okay. So people were studying something coming from mechanics. So if you complexify the, the phase space. Of well, oh, oh, you see, they never thought about complexification these days. You see, they had no, I told you they had no electricity. How can you complexify without having electricity? These things come together. So they studied very simple thing. So what we study at school is pendulum, okay? So they were studying clocks, okay? It goes this way. So when this thing has a big length or when it is small, uh, the, the time, is fixed and it is determined by the length, right? And the gravitational acceleration. However, if the amplitude is big, okay, the, ta the time of this motion becomes different. It depends on amplitude. And, uh, and when people were young, okay, there was a pendulum and there was a man sitting here and going this way. And if you do it, sometimes you want to get a bigger amplitude. And maybe you observed that amplitude become bigger, bigger and bigger and then there is a trajectory, and then you come to this place, okay? And maybe you remember that when you tried, you see, I, I never tried, I was, I'm not very strong, but young, strong guys were doing this way. And when they reach the upper point, you will not stop here, right? And people mostly fall down, okay? So, Everybody who is a male in his youth saw a stupid guy who was doing this thing and falling down. 
So actually, when you make this motion here, you freeze because you lose your speed completely. So when you when you lose your speed here, it means that the period of your motion goes to infinity. So period of this motion is exactly elliptic integral. So the potential energy is of course cosine phi, yes. And uh, you write down equation. Equals to E, the energy. So phi dot is E minus cosine phi. So dt is, is what? d phi over square root e minus cosine phi. And this is elliptic integral. Okay. So period of this motion is an elliptic integral. That's why these things were called period. And the configuration where you freeze here. So we have a kinetic energy such that you reach this point, but you cannot move here, it is of course the generation of elliptic curve. So that was how elliptic curve was discovered in mathematical physics of that time. And mathematical physics of that time was called mechanics, okay? There was no string theory, no quantum field theory. The only physics in the 19th century was mechanics, but still it was possible to discover elliptic thing. And then after you discover this, then you try to go to complex variables, as Corey suggests, okay? So periods, so it's a, it was a problem to get periods. However, here you have a replacement of periods, a length. So here we have a total length and this is replacement of period. And that's why in this tropical world, you can make period map and in the real world without in the non-tropical world you need to understand how to solve this equation and you may ask how it is how it's possible how this potentially could happen that you can take integrals here very simple sum of length of this but you cannot do it here. And the answer is that it's because what you are studying in the tropical world are not integral. You are studying asymptotics. So as we know, asymptotics are easier compute, are easily computed than the things. So this period, this tropical world is a world of asymptotics. However, you see, you have many parameters in the game. So if you choose them in the wrong way, your game of asymptotics would be not very interesting. So the, the tropical trick is to make such, to look at such asymptotics of parameters and the variables such that life is interesting. Okay. In particular, if I will not go to tropical co coefficients, but to real coefficients, thing would go to infinity. And I would not see anything interesting. To see this interesting uh, graph or picture of asymptotics, I need to make exactly this thing. 
take coefficients, take variables, take everything you have in algebraic geometry and take this asymptotic asymptotics everywhere. Okay, so this is the secret of tropical world. Okay, this is the game of asymptotics. Okay, let me make a five minute break and then I'll continue with more tropical geometry. Okay. Five minutes break.
Okay, let me continue. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, once again, so before I go further, I'd like to come back to the memoirs of my youth, as all old people do. Do you remember that in my youth I was trying to imagine Quintic that has called Periloma Road? So at the moment I know how to imagine the elliptic curve. It is this. But you see, this elliptic curve has a lot of hair. And uh, I think that if elliptic curve has this hair, okay? I will have problem to imagine Quintic because Quintic should have more hair, okay? So still I know how to do it. Look, let me put all this hair to infinity. So instead of writing the product that I started with, I mean, a zero, x zero plus a one, x one plus a two, x two, and three terms, and resolve it, okay? Let me be even more radical. Let me write the simplest elliptic curve. Oh. Okay, I understand it as a singular, but I understand that this thing is the result of a limit. I am taking a1 to 0, a2 to 0. Similar things here. Now, can I write it? Of course I can write it. This thing goes to infinity. And such curve is exactly made out of infinity. Or oh. so there is some hair here. So there is some hair at double infinity, and they don't care about this hair. The main thing is this triangle. Ah, so I see that this is a triangle. Okay. Now I am coming to my dream to draw the quintic. But before I draw the quintic, I have an intermediate thing. It's called K3, K3. So, when we started to study string theory, we knew that there is a the single Calabiao in the complex dimension two. That is K3 surface. And it is given by the polynomial of degree four. In CP4. Okay. And there is a book written by mathematical physicist, I think it was Axelrod, about how to imagine K3. But if you don't want to read the book, but still want to imagine K3, you could try to do the following. It now it is clear that CP4.
So how to draw it? Like this. So CP4 is a simplex. And if you don't understand how to draw K3 in general, it's better to draw it like this. So K3 surface is a union of Say how to call it faces of a simplex. So you have four faces. Face downstairs and three faces here. And once again, if you try to see, try to look what is topologically this K3. K3 looks as K3 tropical, looks as S2, okay? Mm. So now you see something interesting. Elliptic curve looked as S1. K3 looks as S2. So Kolya, could you draw out the quintic? Hmm? Hmm? And what you and what would you say is topology of the quintic? I mean tropical topology. Kolya? Yeah, I'm here. You see, I'm coming to my youth. When I've called Perlomov came and told that there was a quintic. And nobody was able to imagine how to draw a quintic. Even Morozov was not able to imagine. And Morozov was very smart. I mean, it's I. I see where you lead, where you're going to, but I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm okay. Mm. So, by the way, you have the same problem. Uh, you know who has this problem, like you, Descartes. So Descartes uh, invented coordinates in dimension one, two, and three. And do you know what happened? He stopped at that moment. He could not imagine the fourth coordinate. And do you know who imagined the fourth coordinate? It was another Frenchman. And you know his name, but in the very different context. And I knew, and I learned it only two weeks ago from uh, Kolyamnyov, who is the father of Pashamnyov, who is a great mathematician, and who knows the history of mathematics. And the name of this genius French mathematician is Grassmann. So he was an absolute genius. And he was not understood by, by his friends, colleagues. No, not even colleagues. He never got a uh, professor position. So he was teacher of mathematics. So he invented some crazy things like odd numbers, higher dimensional spaces, so people consider that he is crazy. 
They never gave him professorship. Okay. So by the way, if nobody would give you professorship, you may think that you are like Gresser. Or just crazy, doesn't You have to trust in yourself. By the way, since I know that you are not crazy and you are smart, okay? But you see, it's, uh, you should know that you are not crazy. So other people should think that you are crazy if you invent something interesting, okay? Okay, the big part is to invent something interesting though. Okay, so now let us, uh, let us go together with Grassmann and overcome the problem of Descartes, who was not able to imagine things. So, so I imagine you're going to uh, draw a, uh, something corresponding to x0, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 equals 0. X4, x, uh, x4. x4, okay. yeah. Exactly. So now let us go with Grassmann. This is in CP4, of course. So first we need to imagine CP4. So CP4 is of course a simplex. So after you know the rule, you can easily check that CP4 is a simplex. So if you see that CP1 is a simplex, it's an interval. CP2 is a simplex, is a triangle. CP3, is a simplex, it's this. Then you can easily say, okay, CP4 is also a simplex. CPN is a simplex, okay? So it's good to know what CPN is. It's a simplex. Okay. Now what this thing mean? It's a surface of a simplex, okay? Just that. So, quintic is a surface of a simplex. Okay? And what is the topology of the surface of a simplex? Hmm? Well, fear. So, one simplex is an interval. The boundary are two points. Two simplex is a triangle. The boundary is S1. Three simplex is this. The boundary is S2. So can you continue the sequence? Hmm? S0, S1, S2. So what you will get then? Of course, S3. I cannot draw it, but you can see that it is S3. Ah, you can compute its Euler number. But if you try to imagine, you would see that this is actually S3. So in this limit uh, that you consider, does Quintic degenerate to something like T star of S3? No, and we will come to this. Of course not. And we will come to this right away. And you see what is interesting is that here, 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 we have what is called 
H2. So, sorry, H D of X D tropical equals to what? To one. Mm -hmm. And then, what is interesting about Calabi Yau manifold? H D zero of H Calabi Yau also equals to what? To one. Hmm? You may think it's a coincidence. Hmm? Later we will see that it's not a coincidence. That there is a way to relate to relate H D of X tropical to H D naught of this manifold. So I think it's interesting. We can see. So I predict we can see the what the Hodge decomposition in terms of topology. You see, it was something that uh, I couldn't do when I was young. People were talking to me about HPQ, topological number, about Hodge decomposition of differential forms. But I could not see these topological numbers. Now I will explain how to see this and uh, what is the total space of tropical manifold because here I depicted only the radial part. And now I should come to the more subtle things, think called angles. Okay. So in order to do this, let me do another thing. By the way, don't you think that this thing should be taught at university? as the first uh, course. They are very elementary. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. So nobody was teaching me and nobody was teaching you. However, the next generations should know this. Okay? Yes. So these are like action angle variables and you Yes. And you and you extend you will extend dz to dz plus i d phi and then that's how you relate h d and h d zero. Mm. No, you see, you are smart. Yes, exactly. So I actually want to treat Z tropical as DZ, DZ tropical, and DZ and DFI as DZ bar in a degenerate complex structure. Okay? And that's why. The topology of this real part is uh, P0 topology. Hmm? So you can see the Hodge decomposition by your eyes. But I'll come to angles in a second. In order to understand the angles, so you, you can understand the angles in two ways. Of course, you can write, you can start the equations, right? You can figure out what is the behavior of angles. Since these are equations, 
So after you solve z, you you could solve phi, right? So I mean, z1, phi1, plus. This is not degree, it's number. With some a1, a2, a3 equal to zero, you can solve this equation, okay? You have kind of separation of variables. You first solve for z, and after you solve for z, you can solve for phi. I am not going to do it right now, okay? Out of focus. Yeah. Out of focus? Yeah. So do I have a focus now? No. Okay. Oh, I see. I'll reload the camera. Good, good now. Okay, so I can do it like this. For a given this solve for five. So it's one way to, to understand it. But I don't, don't think that it's the most transparent way to understand it. In order to understand what's going on, it's better to go from non-parameterized curves for the beginning to parameterized, okay? So let me think, what is the map from tropical curve to tropical variety? That I will consider toric at the moment. So tropical curve, like CP1, is something like C star compactified. So I actually study the map from C star to C star to the power n. Okay. So of course I know how to do it. So here is why. Here is Z. So the question is, which coordinates I'm using? I, of course, like to use logarithmic coordinates. So the holomorphic map goes as follows. Y equals N Z plus constant. Okay, do you agree that this is a holomorphic map? Hmm? Sure. Okay. So it means that Y tropical is, of course, N tropical, it's the same N, Z tropical. So, so that's what we see. But now let us look what happens with phi. Here I have phi as a vector. Phi also goes with n, okay? I, I have to write it down here. Phi equals to n times phi. Okay, plus constant, plus constant. So now I understand what is the geometrical meaning of this vector M.
L is a wrapping vector. Here, Z tropical is time, okay? And moreover, it's a long time because uh, I divided by age. So phi is a space. And here is an evolution of a string. Okay, so holomorphic map is an evolution of a string. This circle wraps S1 to the power n. Okay, and this is a wrapping number, a wrapping vector. Okay. Now, now we see what is the difference. So why not only direction of n is important, but also why the absolute value is important. It's a wrapping number. If you wrap once, twice, three times, many times, you still go in this direction. So direction of the evolution is determined by the wrapping. It's that simple. It's the most simple thing that you can even imagine. Okay. Now, let us see what happens here. You have a wrapping vector N1. You have a wrapping vector N2. So what happens here? You have this pantalons configuration. So if you prefer French mathematical school, you call it pantalons. If you move to the United States, you call it pants, right? You have a wrapping vector N1 here and the wrapping vector N2 here. Is it clear that here you have the sum of the wrapping vectors? Cody, is it clear? Yes. Mm. And we know it from string theory when we have a maps to torps. So in my youth, okay, I always remember my youth. There was so-called fan had somebody decomposition of Riemann surfaces. A guy called Fenhill told that it's possible to represent all ribbon surfaces made out of pens and cylinders and disks. And everybody was drawing such pictures. But there were people saying, ah, it's a picture. Because there is a modular space here. And this thing has some size. And if you take this pen of finite size, you cannot get all Riemann surfaces this way. You can get only surfaces that are close to degeneration. So they say, this picture are bad to do string field theory. It's ugly. You can cut it this way. It's very unclear. However, when we are coming to asymptotics, these things become long, or it means that these pens are shrinking to a point. Because as Einstein told, everything is relative. If the length is much bigger 
then the size of a circle, the area of this vertex is zero. So this has a size like one, and this has a size e to the t over h. Because of h is small, actually zero, this is much longer than this. Or this is a point like vertex. It's exactly what we see. Okay. So now we start to see the topology of what is going on. It is not T star coda as you imagined. It's a circle sitting there. Now, I can understand something. Let me consider M04. Tropical. You remember these are these moduli spaces. So when Waffa wants to get rid of somebody, he asks them. Do you know what, is, what are the moduli spaces of complex structures? And when somebody told, no, I don't, he said, goodbye. When Wafa asked, do you know what Kalabiao is? And somebody answered, no. Wafa said, what? Goodbye. So they should come to me, okay? I'll train them how to talk to Wafa. Hmm? They should study tropical things and they would see that they know it, that they know tropical. So what is M04? So first of all, what is the surface corresponding to 04? It is a sphere with four punctures and punctures in my youth was something that went to infinity. But I already see this. I have seen this in my drawings. I just call this by blue things. So these blue things correspond to disks that are contracting at infinity. So these are marked points. So I have here point one, two, three, four. So what is the module? What is the moduli of this? So where do I have finite numbers? This, this thing has infinite length. Infinity is not a number. The only number is the size of this cylinder. It's called T12. It's because it's one two channel. So let us draw together the moduli space. So at the moment we have a line like this with coordinate t12 okay what is the rest of the moduli space it's not a moduli space yet Kolya, could you help me to draw the complete moduli space uh, sorry what modular space of what so the moduli space of these curves, tropical curves, is T12, the length of the cylinder, of course, tropical. 
and I drew this modular space that represents this type of curves. Let me tell you, there is another piece here. One, two, three, four. And here I here I have this line T one four. So this is called S channel. And this is called T channel. Okay. And as you know, there is a third channel called U channel, since we are doing closed strings. One, three, two, four. You see, this T explains how close points one and three are. T one, two explains how, how close points one and two, one and three, and one and four. Okay. So we have three channels. So can you make up the complete moduli space? Tropical. The answer is simple. When T14 goes to zero, we have the surface in the general position. The same happens here. However, in the tropical wall, to be in general position means to be at a point. It's not an asymptotics. That's why tropical moduli space is actually this. M04 tropical. And of course, with the blue points here. And you see, once again, that it is a sphere. So position here is the length of the cylinder. And there is also a twist. So position here, say, means that you are in the corresponding channel and that, and that the length is this interval. However, the length could be from zero to infinity. And that's why I draw a ray. And complete moduli space is, of course, this. So M04 tropical is of course a sphere. Topologically. However, it has different tropical structure from the standard sphere. So this is also a sphere. We have this tropical sphere and this tropical sphere.
But what can we say about these two spheres? Topologically, it's clear that the both of them are spheres. However, they have different tropical structures. You see? However, because you see it here. However, these tropical structures are equivalent. So there is an equivalence of tropical structures. Hmm? So these are the tropical games. So in the complex world, you have ordinary diffeomorphisms and you can prove that there are no moduli of complex structures on a sphere, okay? Here you see two different tropical structures. But then, and it's written in Michalkin's book, you can make some equivalence that show that actual complex structures are equivalent. So it is this world. And if you look at the tropical world, you can easily see that tropical parameters is exactly the field theory limit of the string, okay? This should be written down. Moduli of complex structures. Tropical become Schwinger times. So we go from strings to particles. Okay. So tropicalization is a is so called field theory limit. So it's interesting. So let me come to my hungry youth. There were several things that I was interested in, like string, string, field theory, collabial, manifold, yes. They were mysterious and very different from each other. However, would I know tropical science? I would see that they completely fit into each other. And you see here, of course, you understand what is the Hodge numbers. Okay. So, of course, H K zero is what? Is a cycle in radial coordinates. Now let us see what is H11. Hmm? It has two dimensions, a radial dimension. and angular. So can we see this H11 somewhere? So let us consider Phi 
GP2 once again. So what is the H11? H11 is of course represented by a curve of degree one. Let us see the simplest curve of this type. It is this one. It's an interval. Hmm? You may ask, how can it be that interval is a cycle in the radial variables? It's because the angle shrinks here. Okay. So So radial cycles are, of course, cycles in which, in relative homology, okay? Kolya, have you studied relative homology in independent university? I don't remember where, but I did study it somewhere. But okay. can I ask where you go? In which direction are you moving? Ah, I'm I'm trying to explain you the topology. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. So I explained you what the Hodge numbers are. So I explained you what the moduli spaces. I explained you what the Hodge numbers are. I am drawing you picture how to imagine uh, complex geometry. Mm -hmm. Without uh, Hodge Deram uh, degenerations and all the tools that you can draw everything. So this interval represents H11. Okay. And now finally, after all these precautions, I'll tell you the last two things. First thing is so they're actually joined together. First piece is where do I where do I have defects? Okay, I promised you to have a defect, right? And second, I promised you not to draw geometrical picture of defects, but actually to have quantum field theory with defects, right? So actually, you can already see it from this picture, but So what are the facts are? Consider tropical variety as a space time. Okay? Then tropical variety, the simplest one, is a collection d equals one, collection of intervals. D equals two. Collection of simplices.
okay? And these intervals have the facts as a finite side. So this is a wall. Well, you can call it interface. Now, you have one quantum field theory here, and you have another quantum field theory here. And these two quantum field theories are joined by this interface. So this is in dimension one. This is what happens in dimension two. So here you see these interfaces in the space time. But you would ask me that you interfaces, not that you are cutting uh, space time into pieces. Interface means that on each space time you have your particular quantum field theory, right? And they will say, yes, you are absolutely right. But here you have more than two, like you have three quantum field theories, right? Yes, here, here, here we have three quantum field theories. You can consider states from this quantum field series as the parameters of the interface. So example that you know in quantum mechanics, is that here we have a line and here we have something. Here is one quantum mechanics, here is another quantum mechanics. They are related by an interface. So where have we seen these pictures? In the brain stuff, of course. Here we have one the brain, here we have another the brain, here we have this x or whatever. This is an interface. So actually you have this type of phenomena. Not only you have interfaces, you also have a description of the interface in terms of, uh, of the third quantum field theory. But still, I need to, to tell you what is the quantum field theory that, you are, that we are talking about. Because it's just a space time. And of course, you may guess. So, quantum field theory comes from holomorphic maps to these pieces. How to write down piece? Two parts. So, tropical holomorphic part means linear motion here. You can see here particles. It was exactly the particles that I described from the very beginning. So this is one dimensional something. Maybe you would prefer something two dimensional. So, if you can, so consider, for example, tropical surface. So it is made out of pieces, okay? So when I draw this piece, I should draw it in two columns. Some pieces go to infinity. They are depicted as blue. And some pieces are depicted as black. To see this, I give you a one dimensional example.
So I need so two here, two here, and something like double here. So it's double. So this curve contained out of pieces. It has pieces of this type. And this is a ray. It has infinity and finite ray. And it has also pieces like this, intervals. Do you see? Now consider it as a target space, okay? It's one dimensional picture. It's two dimensional picture. Where I had the ray here, I have something like this. I have a polygon. Here, actually, a bigon. It, it has some points at infinity. Infinity is drawn by blue. And this has all something as a finite distance. And the point is here. Point can come here to this line in the finite time. To reach infinity, it, need, it takes infinite time. So that's what's going on. Now, what is the quantum field theory here? The quantum field theory, of course, is perturbative quantum field theory with the diagrams that I already told you. These are Feynman diagrams. Some particles are coming from what? From where? From infinity. Okay? So you call this scattering, right? If a particle comes from infinity, it comes from the infinite past. It's a scattering. It corresponds to infinite lengths here or array. There are particles here with a finite time. So these are virtual particles of interaction. The vertex is simple. It's just sum of momenta. But now let us come to the issue of defects or interfaces. When part, so particle can come from infinity, scatter. It's okay, that's we know. However, particle can also go where? It can hit what? It can hit the interface. So it's a new phenomenon. Okay? New phenomena is the ability to hit interface. So when a particle hits interface, where it goes? Hmm? It is split. It becomes split into two particles. So let us consider this is space time one, this is space time two, this is space time three. When a particle hits interface, it has to decouple into two particles. One particle in the space time two, another particle in the space time three. So that's how particles interact with interfaces. Okay. It's probably better to call it a junction. What? 
<clears throat> a junction since you have more than two things meeting together yes so there are more so it so it's so it goes like this and it has even more complicated structure sometimes so here three things come together so this is interface pure interface however you may imagine a picture and simplest one is let me write you linear curve linear or line in cp3 so it's not a line it's a hyper hyperplane in cp2 you will see that to draw a hyperplane in the CP2 is not that easy. Sorry, in CP in CP3, in CP uh, hyperplane in CP3. So hyperplane in CP2. That is a line. In general position was like this. Here I'd like to write down to draw a hyperplane in CP3. Okay. So hyperplane in CP3 has to intersect the line in CP3 by a point, right? We can draw these points of intersection. Then it has to intersect the plane. So two hyperplanes in CP3 intersect by a line, right? So all blue is something that happens at infinity. But then there is something that happens in between. Now, the, the hyperplane itself. So it's not that easy to write it down. So it is given by a point inside this simplex and you can draw it in the following way you have two internal lines inside the simplex and two external things here so this is how to call it not polyedra so how we call this um, yeah yeah um, okay rectangle like rectang like. rectangle Re rectangle but it's not rectangle because angles are not okay this this polygon okay four gone okay four angle with two blue lines and two black lines and the number of such four angles is of course equals to the number of the edges and the number of the edges here do you know how many edges do we have here we have six so hi hyperplane in cp2 is the union union of six four angles hmm? and 
and you have a theory on each of these four angles. And here we have one interface. And here we have the second interface. And here we have interface between interfaces. And on each of these four angles, you have a clear perturbative quantum field theory. And this six theories are joined together. And the last thing is to tell you what is this theory about? I mean this particle. Here I need to do the very last thing. It's called tropical mirror. So tropical mirror is also simple. You just take wrapping to momenta. So you interpret this wrapping. You forget forget about phi. You say that it is momenta. Dual. So you have a quantum field theory. So before Hamiltonian was Lie derivative with respect to R. Now, after mirror, Hamiltonian is, is like this. Quadratic. Hamiltonian becomes quadratic. You see, we had this cons conservation of momenta. What's because the, it was conservation of wrappings. What, what's the last symbol? I cannot see it. It's big. Here. Hamiltonian was. Na D over DRA. So it was evolution in direction of M, right? Mm -hmm. Now, N A is D over D Y A. It's a mirror. You replace wrapping by momenta. So Hamiltonian becomes this. But this is exactly the Laplace in toric complex structure. So actually what you have is a In the space is a free theory with such Hamiltonian. You can write down the field. And then you have interaction. So interaction is not that special. So previously interaction was N1 times N2 goes to N1 plus N2. But uh, this is just just a pointwise product delta function. So would there be no fermions? Would there be no fermions? You can write down the field theory.
for some effective field psi. Plus psi cube. So it is almost the right answer. So there should be some modifications due to fermions. And that's not the end, because you have field theory that is not free like this. It has constant flow of particle from infinity. Plus constant flow of particles from blue infinity. You see, these are the Feynman diagrams. Infinitely constant radi radiates particles. So that's something that condensed people, the condensed theory people like. They take us, they take some uh, impurities or something else that deformed your theory. So I'll talk about this deformation later. So here, this is a field theory on the four angle or or but something you see by, you can write it in any dimension but by later you mean uh next time or later uh, but by later i mean on wednesday okay and uh, but here i wanted to point out that together with all these features this theory has interfaces and points on the interfaces so it's a simple theory with interfaces it's it's more I, th I think it's better to call them junctions because there's more than two things meeting okay okay, well, well, okay. let us call it junctions so it's, it's something with junctions okay junctions with angles but what is interesting is that the full thing if you add these junctions angles everything computes you something that exists that you know, it's Grom of Witten invariance of the total space. So if you add things together properly, you will get Grom of Witten theory. Uh, sorry, but uh, so here you were constructing the string field theory, right? Yes. But that's like uh, in some special limit, right? In the on the modular space, in the tropical limit. Uh, yes, in the tropical limit. But since you are integrating, yes, you don't feel that you are in the tropical limit. The okay. answers would be the same. So if there is something that you could compute in Grom of Witten theory, you could compute it in the tropical limit as well. Answers, numbers would be the same. All answers, all numbers would be the same. I, I don't understand. Aren't you supposed to integrate over all curves, not only those that degenerate to graphs? All curves degenerate to graphs. Like in some limit of the modular space. Ah, so. So actually, the things the things are in the, the things are following. You need to take care that the generate that the generate uh, curves do not contribute. Okay. So the subtlety here is as follows.
So this is a piece of the world. So if you consider curves of this type, it's okay. However, it may be that there is contribution on the generation. If you can prove that the generate tropical curve curves do not contribute. You are done. Or you may evaluate their contribution separately. So here is a distinction between tropical world and the smooth world. A regular tropical curve corresponds to singular ordinary curve. Singular tropical curve corresponds to regular ordinary curve. Okay. So these are tropical curves. And this tropical curve in the ordinary world corresponds to this. And this is singular tropical curve. It corresponds to this. If by some technique you can prove that such curves do not contribute, or you can go without these curves, you are done. If these curves do contribute, you may be able to compute their contribution. So in the tropical world, this is of course ultraviolet. Ultraviolet contact term, contact term like structure. So you may think that there are contributions from these curves and these curves in the tropical world. It would correspond to contributions from these strings and these strings in smooth world. So mostly you should, pro you should go as follows. Compute this. Here we have a good field theory. Then, if you cannot prove that the, that the generate tropical curve uh, gives zero contribution, it could be that they give contribution that could be computed from uh, consistency. From consistency. So these are like counter terms, okay? So in ordinary quantum field theory, when you have particle, when you have local observables, you have correlator and also you have contact terms, okay? So these are like contact terms. So when you compute Grom of Witten and variance, in many cases, you can check that, that the generate curves do not contribute. Like when you have uh, rational curves, quadratic curves, etc., going through some number of cycles. And when these cycles are far apart, then the curve connecting these cycles also degenerates, okay? But sometimes it could be that you have these contributions, like 
the circle here could be mapped to a point, okay? And doesn't have to be very long. Then you need to compute these contributions or contributions of the generate curve separately. So this is the composition of string theory in the infrared and ultraviolet paths. And this is the point of view of, of strings on string theory from the field theory. However, in general, you also have these junctions. So if you put everything together, you will get a tractable uh, description of gromov witten theory for a general target manifold. You see, if you do, if you make thing from uh, polygons, the total manifold may not be toric, okay? It could be general. So, so this is the, the way how to write down contribution for a general uh, manifold. So it's ki kind of universal solution. So how to solve, how to get gromov witten theory on a general manifold, okay? Recipe. Take this manifold, put it in the tropical form. Not necessarily it is a torical. So for torical manifold, you will have no junctions, okay? So toric manifold is a manifold that has only blue border, okay? And you can write down mirrors there. And it is known. It is called the Hori Waffa superpotential that I'll describe uh, tomorrow in some detail. Not tomorrow, on Wednesday, including fermions. However, I want to tell you that if you don't want to study only toric manifolds, because they are too simple, and you would like to study general manifolds, okay? You should do the following. You should include in your description not only blue borders that are the infinite size, that are infinity, but also black junctions and points here. And make manifold out of these pieces. And consider very simple theory there. You see, this theory is universal. The data is combinatorical. It's uh, the structure of junction and, com and combinatorics of junction. So everything becomes combinatorical up to some moduli. You see, since you see here we have junctions. Okay, but sometimes there are moduli here. In particular, here we have something without. Okay. Sorry, I, I don't. So, what's the idea? You're you're taking the limit of the target space. So I I take a target space, very general target space, that comes from algebraic geometry. Okay, I consider the tropical limit of this space. And I see that in the tropical limit, target space is made out of what? Building blocks. Are you, are you saying that uh, the, the gromov witten invariants don't depend on this limit? Like, don't. Of course. Are the same? Are the are same, the same of course. They are numbers. If you change H, it's just another coordinate description. Mm -hmm. So start with H bar equal to one. Mm -hmm. Then continuously go, continuously change H from one to zero. 
room of written invariants are integer numbers. They could not change. After all, this is nothing but coordinate description. You are changing coordinates and you are changing a little bit cycles. Okay, so you, that so you degenerate target, but you don't do anything to the world sheet theory. You don't change alpha prime or anything. Uh, it depends on a uh, good point. It depends on the problem that I have. In the world sheet theory, I can have pro I, I can have uh, two different points, P1, P2, or I can integrate. Okay. When I degenerate target, it is better to change the position of these points of observation together. Or if I integrate, nothing changes because it doesn't matter how far they are. I still, I am still integrating over position. So what I need to know, I need to know that when points are coming together and I go to tropical limit, I have a tree growing out. So So I will I will have something like this. So uh, so from the point of view of the world sheet, I have to consider these pictures, these world sheets, together with the degenerate world sheet. The notion of co coinciding points is changed. So points that are on finite distance would coincide, would coincide in tropical limit. The points that are far apart would be kept in finite distance. However, one can check that the total number does not depend on parameterization of what you map. In Grom of Witten theory, you can rephrase the answer in terms of the image of the curve. So it's number of the curve that goes through cycles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another uh, question in this in the string field theory description in the A model that's this uh, psi with cubic vertex only. It's some approximation, right? It's like the classical. I mean the perturbative or classical part. Yeah, uh, and then you also have a. Uh, yeah, classical part from the point of view of string field theory. So, so this is yes classical without potential counter term. If you have if you have contribution from the generate curves, you need to add here psi to the fourth term. But uh, isn't there the whole sum of uh, instantons? All instantons are already included here. Actually, I'm sorry. Instantons are interaction with the particles that come from infinity. <coughs> so you can ask, what is the instanton number here? The instanton number is the number of time the curve goes through blue lines, okay? Because you can measure the topology by intersection with boundary devices. Mm -hmm. So here in this picture, the instanton number is number of, of lines that go to infinity. Mm -hmm. You can consider a line going from infinity as a change of the background, you can replace this line by effective vertex here. So 
So, so this is what you call the mass term, right? Particle goes, hits something, and goes further. In this case, the instantonic piece sets here. Instantonic, psi psi. And this would be exactly the Hori Waffa superpotential. This thing. And if you take this thing together with instantonic term, it would give you Laplacian in the Varanikov Kansevich deformed complex structure. But also you have this psi cube term from this type of interaction. And also, potentially, you are get, you're getting the counter terms. Plus counter terms. From the generate curves. Plus junctions. So this is universal Gromov Witten. Pillar pleasure plus instantonic superpotential plus regular interactions plus counter terms plus junctions. So if you are on the toric manifold, you for sure can forget about junctions. Of course, you know instantonic potential. It is given just by uh, exponentials of given tal hori waffa. The only thing that you need to take care of is this counter terms. And that's it. So junctions is a story to go from toric to general. And there, of course, so you don't, don't write that much, that far to the right because you cannot ah, see. Thank you, thank you. You know, you are right. You see, it's an important formula because it's universal answer for the A model string theory on general background. Okay. So, universal formula is for string field theory of type A or type B because. They're the same. Plus psi, let me call it superpotential. Actually, it's because it's actually superpotential. Here we have uh, two primes coming from instantons. Plus psi cube plus counter terms. Plus junctions. So we, when you write plus junctions, do you really mean that there's term in the action or what, what of do you course. mean? Of course. Junctions mean that's not, not just a term in the action in the action. This thing is defined on the piece of the space-time. Space-time is a tropical Calabiao. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you write how do you uh, you this? see so it's a question how to write it down I know how to write it you see when I say plus junctions I should mean the following I have this piece so this is a field theory on what on this. And then I have to glue these quantum field theories according to junction. And this would be the result. Yeah, so how do you know, how do you glue? Like the... According to the law of junction. 
Junction means that radial coordinates here coincide. Radial coordinates coincide. So, you mean I have, so, so let me consider the simplest junction. So I need to distinguish between the blue and bra and black. So it is the simplest junction. So this is actually CP1 times CP1. However, this CP1 has an easy tropical structure. And this CP1 has uh, has another tropical structure. But still, this is CP1 times CP1. Because topologically, blue thing is a sphere, and the brown and black thing is a sphere. However, you see, this sphere is at infinity, and the, the second is at infinity. Okay. So it's like a three leaves coming together. So, what I know, I know that particle coming here, of course, decays into two particles. So this is a way sorry, to write sorry, down. The can I? What was CP one cross CP one? I thought CP one cross CP when you draw CP one cross CP one, it was just a square. Ah, what do you, what do you have here? So. So this is CP1, yeah. okay? This is also CP1. Mm -hmm. These two CP1s have different toric structure tropical structure okay but as a manifold there are they are isomorphic ah okay 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 uh, and then uh so uh so the question was uh, before that the question was how how to glue right yes so there was a question how to glue how to glue what how to glue field theories if they have boundaries or junction places potentially with corners. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, what the story about junctions and corner is. So why should we study it and use it? Because using this junction theory with corners, we can glue quantum field theories on the polygons like this into the theory on the manifold. General manifold, not necessarily toric. Yeah, yeah, but uh, still, the question was how to glue. So uh, you yes. said that you impose that R coordinates coincide. So that seems yes. like a so if particle comes here, the R coordinate is uh, continuous. Yeah, so that sounds like a boundary condition that you just impose in your yes. path. It's a junction boundary. And yes. also, the wrapping goes properly. So it means that momentum in y direction. Is preserved. Yeah. yeah, but but then uh, there are two more possibilities. Uh, first, that there are some additional degrees of freedom living in the junction, and then you also had this plus uh, term. You also had this term in the action, and I, I didn't understand how you would get that. You mean this one? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, the last one. This one. The junction, the one that you write. So it's not junction. in the action. It's uh, it's. Uh, I'm sorry. Ah, it's, okay. Uh, it's, okay. Uh, the... You see. I was on the hurry. Yeah, uh, sure. Oh, sure. Then this there's is... only one. Then there's only one remaining question. Do you have like degrees of freedom living in the junction? So at the moment, I don't have degrees of freedom 
living on the junction because this is uh, the manifold without D brains. So would I have D brains? So you see, this is this was only about closed strings. But of course, uh, I should also add D brains. Okay, I am not that old. You see, I am old, but not that old not to know about D brains. Of course. The general target is not a manifold. It's a manifold with D brains. So one sure one has to think how to add D brains here. But I'm I'm wondering like can you have some modes localized from on the junction that kind of uh, localize in the tropical limit? Mm. Let, let me tell you. Actually, I don't know. Actually, all these are open questions. You see this theory of quantum field theories uh, on this, uh, with this junction is absolutely open, you see? Nothing is done in this direction. So what mathematicians were doing, they were studying the manifold itself. So what physicists is doing? Physicists are not studying the manifold itself. They are putting the quantum field theory on the manifold. Okay. So I know what to do, but I have not solved this at all. It's kind of a project. It's a project that is interesting because it's not you just get this junction from your head. You know that if you make the junction properly, and you put everything together, you get a nice answer. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. like you get an answer for Kalabiyao from 4K3, whatever. Because uh, because everything could be made out of these simple pieces. So you study simple piece, you solve the theory here, then you make this junction, that's it. Answer would come combinatorically and universally. And then you can prove everything universally for all manifolds. After you have this building block. And building block is not that hard, it's doable. Is, is it really general manifolds or like? Yes. So people believe that general manifolds without the brains should have this form. At least it is known that all curves could be made like this. It is clear that all uh, hypersurfaces in projective space could be made like this. Uh, but like in order to have the tropical limit, don't you need some kind of C star and action? Or... No, of course not. Consider example, curve of degree two. I think it's clear that there is no C star action there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, hmm. So consider something crazy like this with legs, legs, legs. Mm -hmm. So if your degree is high enough, you can have degree two, you know it. That if you have equation x0 cube plus x1 cube plus x2 cube equal to zero, it's elliptical. But you may ask what would happen if you go further? If you consider x0 to the fourth plus x1 to the fourth plus x2 to the fourth plus some other terms in dimension, uh, so in CP2, you know how to do it. You know that in this case, you have this polynomial of degree four downstairs. I am coming to my use. Here I'll put dx0, dx1, dx2. 
I'll put here Euler vector field, x d over dx. So here I'll have a two form. So here the gray is three, here the gray is four. Here I can put any, any monomial, a one, x zero, plus a two, x one, plus a three, x two. Okay? So I'll have several holomorphic forms. Okay? So from this, I'll see that H1 is bigger than zero and it's related to degree. Here, I can see it from the Euler computation. You see, I can compute the Euler number. Euler number is related to the number of blue points, black points and uh, edges. And you can see here how number of, uh, how Euler number of this object is given by this degree. So by the way, this is an illustration of the index theory. That when you have uh, a genus G and if, and if you have a degree, so when do you have these curves? So how many curves do you have? So you can also consider this as, as a tropical uh, version of the index theory. So of course you can have this. I, I mean, is it clear that in higher dimensions, any symplectic manifold for, for which you can def define gormov wooden theory, that it has this? So I don't know, let me tell you. I don't know about symplectic manifold. I know only, you see, this theory is, is uh, doable only for algebraic manifold. So if you tell me about symplectic manifold with almost complex structure, I say, I don't know anything. Uh, these are wild objects. I have no control. I, I couldn't control them at all. Okay, uh, if you consider them. So th what's the most general the case that you can control? Algebraic? Uh, so, uh, so I think, at least I, I believe, okay? There is no theorem because Michalkin struggles with it. Michalkin tries to prove that all uh, algebraic manifolds could be glued from such object mm. in the tropical limit. So you have any number of functions. Uh, I'm just trying to imagine because in the in the toric case there were this half of the man, half of directions were circles and you kind of shrink circles and that's how you get trouble here, here you also have the circles because you're right you consider hypersurfaces intersections of hypersurfaces surfaces uh, in CPMs mm -hmm. so there is a notion of projective manifold projective manifold is something that you can embed in CPM mm -hmm. For n that is uh, large enough. In this case, it works. Okay. So here you have curve uh, embedded into CP2, but you mm -hmm. can imagine curve embedded into CP3. Mm -hmm. So these things are not universal, there are equivalences. But you asked me about, do I believe that there is a representative? And I say, I, I will say, yes, I do believe that there are representatives. Then you may ask me, what about singular targets? And I would say, great, great. It's possible to have singular targets. There is nothing wrong to consider singular, one second, Singular target. Like there is singular CP1. Mm -hmm. So this is CP1 inside the CP1. Okay. So Consider CPY inside 
CP1 times CP1. So this is a singular. This is a regular, okay? Regular has moduli of toric structure. Singular has T1 equal to zero, okay? Mm -hmm. So this one has equation X1, so X, y equal to zero. Mm -hmm. This probably has equation x, y plus e to the t1 over h equal to zero. Um, well. Mm. So this is made from the following pieces. And here was a junction four to one. This one is made from the following pieces. Here we have junction four to one. Here we have two junctions, three to one, plus you have this black piece that has no infinity. These two things have the same topology. However, these two things have different toric structure. So do different toric structure is like different complex structure. Grove of written and variant do not depend on it. Okay. By the way, uh, we've been going for more than three hours now. Okay. You see, yeah. I, I just, no, I think we, we need to stop. Okay. I just want to show you where the junctions and junctions with corners. So why they, they come out in this story? So it was my aim. So you see the, you see the place where junctions appear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So it means that I achieved my goal. I showed you theory with junctions that has a nice final answer. That's it. Thank you. Okay, should I stop the recording then? I'm stopping the recording, right? All right. Mm -hmm.